Yeah, I did see. Uh, obviously, I tweeted out yesterday because I, I started catching up on. I try to avoid anything work related when I'm on vacation. You know, I, I chat a little bit with the team, but it's supposed to be. It was my this. That was my only vacation this year. So I tried to avoid any work stuff. But when I was on in the airport getting ready to come back uh, yesterday, I did start catching up on stuff. And the Blizzard thing just blew my fucking mind. I I, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck is going on over there, but it is very counter to everybody I spoke to at Blizzard. Literally everybody I spoke to at Blizzard. It is exactly the opposite of how they seem to feel. Uh, so, am I surprised? I, I wish I'd gotten time with my Kibara, but, um, that did not happen, and I'm starting to paint, paint a picture in my mind of why that didn't happen. Uh, I could be wrong, but I'm, uh, definitely getting that pression. I don't think the people who I spoke to at Blizzard lied at all. I don't think they did. I said I spoke to Brian Birmingham, who's now no longer with Blizzard. The people I spoke to were pretty... At least, I'm pretty good at telling these things. They were pretty fucking genuine. Uh, they were pretty genuine. But I did not talk to my Kabara. You know, I did not talk to those dudes. Maybe I lied? I didn't. I can tell you. I mean, we have it on camera as well. Like, with Ian and John and Holly is... Here's the weird thing. Uh, let's have a little recap for this for people who aren't sure what's going on. So, Blizzard Entertainment Mike Ibarra spoke to employees in an all-hands meeting on Zoom yesterday, addressing a number of controversial subjects, including the ranking thing, which is why Brian Birmingham left, reduced profit sharing, and the upcoming return to office mandate. This is just mad. Activision Blizzard's ending work-from-home policies. Employees expected to return to the office this summer. Blizzard Entertainment appears to be ending most of its work-from-home policies, which began in early 2020 as a measure from COVID. First deal tailed on, on Twitter, a spokesman for Activision Blizzard confirmed to game developer that Blizzard employees would return and be required to spend three days a week in the office starting on July 10th. A spokesperson for Blizzard confirmed the office work would resume on April 10th for Activision Publishing employees and July 10th for Blizzard employees. Employees for both divisions will be required to come to the office three days a week. The spokesperson added uh, that the King portion of the publisher went back to the office in July. The cadence of these in-office days are set by King's team leaders to fit with the needs of each team. Blizzard has been returning teams to the office over the past year. Uh, they continued by saying that the office days were created in partnership with the leadership of each team and customized based on what's best for the business and the team. But three, on the face of this, this doesn't seem bad, but or like too strange, right? But it actually is really bad for a lot of the staff. Uh, many employees have been critical of this announcement, commenting both privately and publicly about their disdain for the seemingly unnecessary change. Knowing that Blizzard successfully launched Classic WoW, two retail expansions and several game updates in the three years since shifting to remote, Others lamented being uprooted after having been given uh, leave to move their families to completely different states. This is the important one. So everything I know after being there and talking with these guys is they... And Ian said this to me, and it's on camera. There's no reason for us to come back to the office. In fact, there's a distinct advantage that they found with people working at home. Such as work-life balance, considerably better. Blizzard couldn't do, uh, when they were releasing new content or having opinions and stuff, They there's so many members of staff that they had to rent the local cinema to show things to people in order to get everybody to see it, right? Like, I, you've seen the, my tour of the offices. There's, like, theaters on every single floor of the buildings. But there's so many members of staff that if they want to show off, like, hey, what do you think about this new content or this is what we're doing this year, they had to rent out the local cinema to show the people stuff. Whereas in Zoom meetings and stuff, they, everybody had it on their screen and they got much better feedback. They, everybody just had it, like, right in their face instead of being sat at the back of a movie theater, like, what, shouting or just having to sit quietly and stuff like that. just didn't work. Um, now, I had a big talk with Ian about this because work from home creatively is very, very tough. Uh, so I was curious how they'd beaten it. Like, for us, we have, what, five members of the team who work with PG. Four of them, well, currently three of them work in our office that's drowned, and it will be four. 
And the good reason, the reason we do that is obviously with cameras and shit like that and creatively, it is better. It is far better to have us together when we're discussing ideas and working on things. It's way, way better. We've done it work from home. We're doing it now work from home, but it is considerably better to have those people in. So I was curious how they beat it. And he said, it's got its problems. And, you know, Ian was pretty open. It's got its problems for sure. You don't, what you miss out on is, hey, I've got this idea for this piece of content. And you're not just next to the guys who'll be making it, who are, have iterations and stuff like that. So they, they have a lot of internal systems to try and keep that environment up. Uh, but it's it's tough. It's really, really tough. Uh, so it's it was a problem, but they, they seemingly overcame it and Dragonflight came out of the back of it. But the bigger problem is this. They told people it wasn't going to happen. You know, like, it seems fine. So people moved on the back of that to states that aren't Irvine, California, which is giga expensive to live in. Average home price, Irvine, California. Like, Irvine is no joke to live there. It's it's a it's a very very wealthy air, area. It's that's just a that's just a fact. Like it's a ridiculously expensive area. Two bedroom, two bath, six hundred thousand dollars. Two bed, three bath, seven hundred thousand dollars. Four bedrooms, one point four million dollars. One million dollars for three beds. Like looking for somewhere to live, one point one million dollars. One point two, one point one. Right, like <laughs> it's a crazy expensive area to live in. And what else you've done, and this is where it gets ropey in this meeting. So a lot of people moved away. Halinka, Brian Halinka, who's a big deal of Blizzard, he drove four hours from where he lives to the office to come and talk to me. Four hours. That's how far away he lives from the Blizzard campus. He drove four hours from his house just to come and talk to me for an hour and then got back in his fucking car and went home. Like, I'm very thankful for that. But it's like, yeah, work from home's great for me. I've got a nice place to live. It's not as expensive. I can still do all my work. Like, it's awesome. Um, but what they've also done is they've recruited a lot of people who do not live here at all. Like, uh, I know um, for the people I worked closely with when I was at Blizzard, Alex, uh, who was awesome, he lives in San Francisco. Uh, Bethany lives on, like, the other side of California entirely. Uh, so, like, all these staff that they've hired don't live around here. And then I think in this meeting, let's go back here. Right, so the stack ranking thing. This is where you had to put people into categories, even if they didn't deserve it, right? Uh, the practice of using stack rankings to evaluate employee performance came to public light after Brian Birmingham left the company in protest due to refusing to give out an undeservedly low employee evaluation in order to fill the stack ranking quotas required by execs. Decided to get as an unfair practice, which pits employees against one another. Birmingham followed up by saying the policies originated from the problematic influence of Blizzard rather than Blizzard themselves. Activision Blizzard. Mm -hmm. Despite these comments seemingly absolving Blizzard and its leadership, however, President Mike Ibarra took a different line. Reportedly downplayed the concerns raised by Birmingham. Frustration apparently began to boil as the Q&A went on, particularly during a conflicting back and forth discussion of how the company ranks worker performance. Ibarra reportedly downplayed comments made by lead software engineer Brian Birmingham, who criticized the company's use of stack ranking policy that he claimed would force him to punitively rank an employee whose performance he found to be satisfactory. Blizzard spokesperson told GameDev that Ibarra did not directly reference Birmingham's comments. They provided an explanation of the content of this conversation that did mirror the sentiments our sources said were expressed in the meeting. We don't, we don't to stack rank employees one through X at Blizzard. We have high expectations for our teams. Managers set goals with every employee and we measure performance against those goals. We provide managers with guidelines for how to consider performance ratings in large teams to show they're more fair and unbiased and there's flexibility. Leadership provides feedback across the company to ensure that ratings are not solely based on one manager's opinion. Performance management is every manager's job. It isn't an easy one and we appreciate it. So that says like nothing. <laughs> that says absolutely nothing. Uh, reduce profit sharing. Compensation was also a big talk point following a recent announcement that Blizzard employees would only be receiving 58% of their profit sharing bonus despite record breaking growth and profits during Activision Blizzard's latest financial results report. Hey Chris, no, nope, Specs. We just had the most profitable year ever. 
Thank you. You feel good about that, team? <laughs> you feel good about that, team? And I thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> pizza pie. Yeah, we ordered pizza pie. Thank you very much. <laughs> Appreciate all your hard work. Well done. <laughs> Uh, employees took exception to a statement made by Barra suggesting that all groups were similarly affected by the cuts when each group's base compensation and bonuses are so dramatically skewed. According to several sources, Ibarra stated something to the effect of if you think that executives are making a lot of money and you aren't, you're living in a myth. I mean, I've seen your car, Mike. It's not on layaway, is it? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, uh, hmm. yeah. Oh, those poor execs. Ow. Oof. Rough. You're never going to get sympathy. Even if it were true, you're never going to get sympathy. In the context of the discussion, Ibarra's statement was technically factual. Blizzard's decision to cut the profit sharing bonus 50% does apply to all employees, executives included. Different bonus, though, innit? Yeah. It's a different, different bonus. Not quite the same. In a broader context, sources agree that Barra's statement, and particularly the implication that employees are living in a myth, does not make sense. Ah. All right, the return to office mandate. Discuss uh, discussion regarding the end of uh, work from home policies tied into the question of compensation, as employees would soon find themselves with increased expenses related to returning to a physical office. Others may have to relocate entirely, although apparently some workers would re be able to remain all remote. According to our sources, Ibarra responded to a question that argued this return to office policy would cause the company to lose talent at an inopportune time. The questioner asked what leadership intended to do to prevent such departures. Ibarra reportedly did not provide any clear action plans to retain talent, though it was apparently shared elsewhere that Blizzard would open offices in new unnamed locations to access central hubs. That's true, they are, but they're not close to California. He did, however, uh, that I know of anyway, he did, however, reportedly say the following. At the end of the day, we want people to be happy. And if decisions about being happy don't align with where we're going, and you won't be happy, then you have to do what makes you happy. <clears throat> I'll, I'll, if you weren't sure, because he said happy a lot there, let me just rephrase this for you. This is what we're doing. If you don't like it, then leave. There you go. I just summarized it for you. Okay? So there you go. If, you, if you're unsure how that was worded, that's how that's what he's saying there is this is what we're doing and if you don't like it then don't be here anymore all right <clears throat> after publication blizzard reached out to add more comments to this topic oh god <laughs> i can picture the fucking pr team that we dealt with mike go ahead off go. <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh, i can totally picture them we understand some people may not find this model ideal and that change is hard, but we're one of 90% of companies returning to the office this year. Why? Why? I'm not wrong, right? How many companies reported massively increased efficiency and productivity from work from home? A lot. A lot. A lot of people. A hell of a lot of people. Yeah. Like most. We're actually like, this is actually fine. And it's pretty good. It's actually fine. Yep, almost all of them. <clears throat> we can't get rid of employees. Yeah, it's it's actually worked out totally fine for a lot of companies who've been saying for years we do not need to be in the office for this shit. They also reaffirm that the company is continuing to honor the status of all remote workers and exceptions on the return to office plan will be made for medical or religious reasons. Hmm. Hmm. You can't just leave those millions of tech and space empty. I asked about that. I did ask about that because it's weird. You know, we've, we've shown you inside the Blizzard offices. They're just dead. It's like a wasteland. So we were like, what, what are you going to do? Like, what is the plan here? because you've got these giant this giant campus and there's just nobody there it was busy while we were there i think there was 200 people there something like that 
and it was that was actually busy like it was pointed out like for the last three years this is the most people they've seen on campus um so we did we asked about this stuff and they were like it's actually kind of fine uh because we're going to rotate people in and out uh we can have some space here we can move other people in and there's uh some california's got some cuts because this is you know some tax breaks because of the work from home to keep people safe and keep businesses going it's a huge campus uh, i can't even get you a big overview here na, 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 na. God, of course it's another har harassment post where's the picture uh so it's actually huge it actually goes back here yeah so this is that's the statue there and that's the like warcraft hearthstone is in there and other games are right around here this is like the canteen and the gym and all that kind of stuff and then like classic wow is now like not in this building i think it's this building back here because we had to walk all the way this is kind of a nice walk it's like a nice walk but all these buildings are pretty much empty like every office is pretty much empty but they again the for the people we spoke to they were totally fine with it some people were coming in one or two days a week they'd uh john height pointed out that they managed to give everybody the resources to work from home within like a week or it, like so they were fine with it like john was totally fine with it I hide the classic alleys they'd moved them to like a, their own building that was that was a new change i think i think it's this one nups might be better he's good with a bit more awareness on it but i think that's the classic wow building this is like a hospital over here I think that's the classic wow building this was a car park that's that's just a big ass car park there yes sir <laughs> well they said it was it was actually i mean i'm going off the people who are working there it's like yeah it's fine it's a little weird but it's you know it's fine and our employees are happier and they're working better and we're getting some tax breaks for it so i, I think all of california is doing with that because we spoke to some people who work at other game devs in the area and they were all the same they're like we just don't it's not necessary and in fact one thing that was a big bonus was a lot of the weird meetings anybody who works office life will also know this you end up in meetings all the time where you just don't need to be there this could be an email right that's 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 the usual thing and that happens with blizzard quite a lot or at least used to is they would invite us i i can tell you the most egregious use of my time that blizzard offered me and i i i'm i like a lot of the blizzard people you guys know but the most egregious use of my time is they wanted me to fly to california <laughs> they want me to get on a plane fly to california which is you know it's got to be 20 hours all told with travel leaving my door it's going to be about 20 hours uh to fly to a movie theater in california to watch the uh battle for azeroth <laughs> trailer and then get back on a plane the same night and come home unpaid like, that was the email i received like unpaid as well i was like what are you talking about why would i ever do that and they were like because it's blizzard and it was still on the back of like you know blizzard's inviting you this is a really cool thing i was like that sounds that's just horrible that's on unhor it's on unhor it, that's that's just awful yeah a lot of yeah paid an exposure kind of although i'm not going to name names who were other content creators who started to have this problem with blizzard this was a problem we had with blizzard before i stopped actively covering it daily it was a regular problem we'd have is they were still very much you should be thankful we're talking to you and that works when let's let's be truthful about this right that works when you're like new to making content you know you're a small streamer you're a small youtuber yeah it gets your name out there as you were attending this thing it does it gets it out there and you're probably not earning enough that it's a very big deal and you get to fly to america and you get to do all these cool things you get to have dinner yeah there's a part of that to it but me and a few other content creators were like not only does this cost us a shitload of money it's a massive inconvenience i can actually turn this into an earner by not doing it i could literally watch the trailer at home make a video about it if i want if i chose to make one of those let's watch the trailer videos and actually make money this way so why would i do it like it makes no sense like you're actually you've got you were now at a point as as because we had a we have a discord that has like several of the big content creators in it and we were like what the fuck are they thinking this is now at this point where this doesn't make any sense for us like to do this stuff and <laughs> they never got it but they've changed now they've changed now i will i want to be clear on this the blizzard i deal with now isn't like that 
They've been very good to the content creators recently. Very, very good. So that, that, was, that was like a year and a half ago or two years. That's who, that's the blizzard we were dealing with. It's like, if we offer you something, you should be like lapping it up immediately. And we were like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so, dude. That's just not how this works anymore, unfortunately. Uh, okay. Where were we? Okay. Long-term disciplines. Perhaps the largest point of outrage came from comments implying that quality assurance and customer service, two of the employee groups most affected by these other changes, were not considered long-term disciplines. A Blizzard spokesperson walked the statements back after the fact, citing entry or junior level roles rather than CS and QA departments specifically. Although the clarification rings somewhat hollow given that the majority of customer service and quality assurance are generally hired as low paid entry or junior level roles. In the discussion, Ibarra reportedly said something to the effect of, some of our disciplines are not long-term disciplines. Was a spokesperson confirmed that Ibarra made that comment. According to them, those disciplines are considered not long-term because the company wants to grow people to grow and take on expanded responsibility and opportunity. They said that Activision Blizzard has many programs to support that growth. After publication, Blizzard reached out to game developers to say that this comment from Ibarra was not made to reference any specific discipline or department. Roles at Blizzard have different compensation levels. We encourage and support people in lower compensation roles to further develop skills and expertise that allow for greater opportunity and rewards for them. This was meant to include a broad swathe of entry junior level roles that were not targeted at our talented CS or QA teams who play important roles in serving our players. We appreciate the important roles to our QA and CS teams playing serving the players. <clears> hmm. <throat> hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's shitting on your team. The demoralized employee response. In response to these and other comments made throughout the meeting, employees' response has been overwhelmingly critical. Feeling demoralized and undervalued, several have taken to Twitter and other social media to share their frustrations and show support for their fellow co-workers while lamenting the alarming cost of living in areas like Irvine. Game developer again relays a few of these comments from their own sources. One source speaking to game dev wanted to stress that today's QA with management was the most demoralizing one they'd witnessed since J. Allen Brax made his final internal comments before he departed in 21. The combined comments made during the QA painted a picture of management that stunned this source. According to them, Blizzard employees who weathered the last two years did so with the belief that the Blizzard entertainment of today is not the one described in the lawsuit filed by the state of California. They described a sense that many unpopular decisions seen by the public were made by Activision Blizzard, above Mike Ibarra and other company leaders. But today's QA has challenged that belief. They said that hearing the words come out of Ibarra's mouth made it seem like the unpopular policies and refusals to raise pay, raise pay were driven by Blizzard leadership. It feels wrong, they said. Nobody asked for this. No one knows where this came from. This is not the Blizzard we've worked with in the last year and a half. So... just shit man like for a lot of the people who've had uh it's bobby's will it does feel like ibar is doing what he's been told to do but i haven't spoke to him i don't know but i'm, I'm not a, i can't say i'm a huge fan because i don't know him i don't know anything about him but it feels like this is exactly what it is is this is happening you've got to fucking sort it out deal with it bobby wants a new boat yeah, I mean, that's how I feel about it. I feel like Ibar Ibarra has had to cement himself as basically the spokesperson for Activision. And that's it. Because this is, I could say, without any bias, without any dick sucking, because, you know, we paid for our trip. I can tell you, I don't believe this is how Ian felt. I don't believe this is how John Height felt. And I do not believe this is how Holly felt. At all. In any way, shape, or form. Like, very counter to how they felt things were going very very counter and that was the same for brian birmingham when i spoke to him he's one of the top classic guys like the top people i spoke to which was not ibarra did not feel like this at all in any way uh they didn't lie to us about the activision thing but uh, the activision influence but it's clearly there and it looks like ibarra's had to do the, the dirty on it they want to speed up selling the company maybe Maybe. I imagine they would like to get out from the Activision side. What if you're on the big screen at Blizzard right now? Hello. Uh, my feeling is this is Ibarra doing what Bobby says for now to drag things out until Microsoft takes over. Could be, but they're going to lose a lot of staff. Like, the whole work from home thing, 
I mean, I've worked from home. How long have I worked from home now? I've worked from home since 2004. I think. Or 2008. But I will say, there are some people who can't do work from home. I'm not saying everybody who works from home is a good employee. That's not true. That's very, very not true. There are some people who literally cannot be trusted to work without supervision. And it's really sad, but that is the case. That is absolutely the case. There are, there are plenty of people like that. I'm watching. <laughs> yeah, my, in, my, in my previous job. like if, if you don't have somebody fucking watching you, they just won't do any work. There are lots of those people out there. Like, they're not, not hard to spot either. That is absolutely the case. There is lots of people like that. But ultimately, in a work-from-home environment, you don't keep those people around. Like, you don't keep those people around. Let's see. I'm working for all looking at preach stream. I think that's fine, though. Work from home does not mean I mean shit, dude. I play games for a living and make videos about video games and content about video games. I work my fucking ass off, like to the point where you know I have my family step in to stop me and shit. Like it's, I love it, and I can have a stream open on the side and still work very efficiently. Like I don't see, I don't have that as a problem. I really don't. And then when I hear about like, um, you know, if you, you like, let me read about like companies that are putting webcams in to make sure your eyes are looking at the screen. We read about that like three months ago or something. Like you know, that's where that's the line that's been crossed, right? It's. There's nothing wrong with getting up and getting a sandwich and shit like that. And like, oh, checking in on something, like doing your work and doing all that kind of stuff. Uh, so this is with Zoomy and we can't guarantee Activision was listening in. Uh, of course they were listening in. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, 100%. Uh, Byron told his team about after Zoomy and me and myself and boss a bullshit meeting because his boss told him. No, nah, because it's, it's, it's caused so much discord. They knew this discord was coming because you've had so many staff move away. Wouldn't you? Like, you'd be crazy not to, right? You're going to earn the same wage and move to an area that's probably maybe got better schooling, is like a quarter of the living costs. Of course you do that. Josh did that. You know, Josh, when he, when he was still at Blizzard, he moved really far away. Like, it, took, it was like an over an hour away from LA. Of course you do that. You get paid the same salary. You can do the same work. So you move somewhere way cheaper to live. And then they say, oh, now you've got to come back. Like, okay, so I'm effectively taking a massive pay cut as well as a work-life balance overhaul. Unless they're going to start flying people in, which I doubt. Who actually works eight hours a day? If you love your job, you work way more than that. I do. Like, genuinely, I do way more than that. Uh, it happens to us after going for work from home. People move to cheap areas. Of course. Of course. You'd be a moron not to do that. Unless you, like, really like the high-level lifestyle. It's like, hey, work from home's fine. We don't see this changing at all uh and it's gonna be at least a few years of course you would go and live somewhere fucking way cheaper that's better for your family oh i don't have to commute anymore that traffic in irvine i walked across that bridge every morning pretty much me and me and nups like a walk both of us so we would go for a big walk to like the local shopping center you know get some snacks and just take a walk or whatever the tr watching all those people try and get into irvine on an eight wide highway just all sat in traffic every morning. I think I said to Mike, like, that looks like hell. That looks like actual hell. Like, that's, that just looks like the worst thing ever. I don't want to do that every... I don't want to start my day that way. I certainly don't want to deal with that when I'm going home. Long commute, so, especially for a job where you don't need to be there. There are some jobs where you do need to be on site. That's absolutely acceptable. But not everybody. Uh, the three-hour work week. You have to make a law because Australians will work seven days all week. Yeah. Don't imagine it's sure they're supported by it. Otherwise, why should you feel that passion? Yeah, that's that's just a job thing, right? That's just a job thing in general. You should uh, you should do your best. I try and do my best. I'm not the I'm not certainly not the greatest at it, and I'll I'll fail regularly, and my team will point out when I fail. But um, yeah, you should uh, you should create an environment where your team can say what they want to say, and uh, get their opinion out there, and listen to their opinions, even if you don't agree with it. I think. <laughs> I think Chris will know we had a meeting like that the other uh, before, just before I went to Bulgaria, where I was like, Chris, explain it to me. I'm not saying no, just explain it to me. Give me a fucking reason, because I was angry. <laughs> I was like, I'm sick of hearing about this. Explain it to me. I'm listening. 
But I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it. Eric, are you going to play video games? It's true, obviously. Yeah, it's not just a... Uh... I don't know where that's come from. But yeah, that's that's what I eventually ended up doing. What's the point of the mandate? What does it accomplish? I'm not sure. Why do they want everybody back? That's the question. I'm not seeing an answer to that. Is why do you want everybody back? Did we get a statement on why they're making people come work from home? Is it in here? Uh, la, la, la. Uh, is this it? Uh, oh, that's when they implemented. Have we got an actual thing of the statement? Well, they're going to lose a lot of staff for sure. Yeah, where's where's the statement? Have we got that? Uh, office lease related. That shouldn't be a problem based on what I know. Unless California... Uh, it's California da, 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 changing its tax situation. Because they were working to keep... They did not want... Obviously, it would be very bad if a lot of businesses moved out of California, right? So they were encouraging people to keep the buildings and the properties, even though there was nobody in them. Because what California didn't want is like, oh, everyone's working from home now. Okay, everybody's just fucked off and left us because they don't need to be here anymore. Yeah, I'm trying to see if, they, if they've if they announced they're changing it. Uh, most people don't realize how much it costs to live in California. Like, it was crazy. It's actually crazy. Because everything, everything, at least in Irvine, uh, the way Irvine is like set out is kind of like a big parking lot. And all homes are like hidden. It's it's a weird place. It's very industrial. It's a very industrial place. It's almost like clinically designed. It feels a bit like you're walking through some city built in Inception or something. Like it's very strange. And all places where people live are all like put away from where the businesses are. Like hidden behind these tree lines and stuff like that. Like one little road that leads to where people live. It was It was really odd. I was like, I, I think I asked the tax driver, I was like, where do people live? Because there's just no homes. It's just like block, 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 block. And that's it. It was, like, it, was, it, was, it was very much like just a big parking lot, like a big shopping center type thing, but with no people. Because everybody drives. So everybody's gated off. Like me and Nups were the only people walking. Just the streets were just empty except for cars. That's it. There was nobody walking, barely anybody going anywhere. It was very odd. It, it felt very strange. Uh, I can't see that they're changing anything. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like a purpose-built area, I believe. Irvine was, like, specifically designed for that purpose. Paved paradise. Well, there's not even sidewalks in some areas. Like, you can't walk. <laughs> Nobody walks. Uh, yeah, the driving thing is weird. There was crashes. There was at least three or four crashes a day as near LA. Like it was just normal that there was crashes. Like we had the radio on, there was just constantly crashes. And just it took oh, I mean the best example. Max. Uh Max's house. Uh, was we were at the liquid facility and Max has a house nearby. And I think on the sat nav, Max's house is outside of the main city, but it's like 15 minutes away. And it took us 45 minutes to get there. It was ridiculous. It was absolutely ridiculous. It was the craziest thing. Is is like, oh yeah, we you know we'll we'll shoot we'll shoot to my house later and then we'll go for some dinner. Uh, it's only 15 minutes away and we got talking for a few hours and it's like oh god it's gonna be like five o'clock so we left it took 45 minutes to get there and then we could still see where we'd come from <laughs> from his house and it was crashes all the time all it was horrible imagine driving that every day Blech. gross absolutely gross a lot of people have a problem with people working from home though 
And I think that's probably where the rage comes from, is people seem really upset that some people get to work from home. And they don't. And they, like, project all that anger onto them because their job doesn't allow them to do that. Like, you're not working if you're working from home. That's where the biggest, like, counter to this comes is where, in that respect, is like, oh, you're working from home, so you're clearly not doing anything. Which I guess is kind of like the projection is if I was working from home, I wouldn't do a goddamn thing. I would just fuck about, answer an email every now and again, and then pretend I'm working. Right? That's that's the that it's it's kind of boomer energy, but it's also the people who also believe that work you, your job must be something that like sucks. Like that has to be your job. Your job has to be something that sucks and is a grind and it's fucking awful and you've got to be like knuckles bleeding every day. You've got to hate it. And you're sat at home all cushy in your slippers and your PJs and calling it work. That's not work. That's not real work. That kind of shit. Uh, who said that ever? I doubt people are like this. I'll find you some quotes. Sure. I know. Da, 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 da. Where was it? I know Bex linked them to us as well. Like people were giving all this hatred back. People are 100% like that. I get it all the time because uh, for the most part, what people see is we just play like FF14 and then I turn the stream off and I go to bed. Like that. <laughs> that's all it takes. That's it. That's that's all it takes to uh, to be a streamer. Like that's because that's the impression people see. That's the bit on the camera, right? Is I wake up, I go play a game for a couple of hours uh, and then I just go to bed and, you know, millionaire, you know, like... <laughs> That's how it works. That's all that happens. Yeah. And then you look at like everybody doing that in every category of Twitch. And it's not like that, unfortunately. It really scares me. Like, again, seeing how much suicide is rising in the streamer world. It's fucking scary as fuck. It's really scary. Uh, I can't find the post that was talking about it. It went dark. It gets really dark, yeah. Especially if something, you know, you've got to, you got to be out there. It, it truly is. It, it's there's a dark side to it. I always warn everybody who comes to work with us, uh, or wants to get into streaming, is like you need to be aware of that. You've got to be. Uh, I could be all those lazy work from productive, lazy at work, productive work. I honestly, I, I mean, it depends if you like your job. I did the least amount of work doing my my previous job because I didn't like doing it. It's as simple as that. I definitely spent some days doing nothing. Nothing. I would sit on my laptop and I'd absolutely be looking at something else on a screen and then just killing time until I got to go home. I absolutely did that several times. Several times. It's just absolutely killed time. It's fucking boring. Work shit. I don't like it. I don't want to do it anymore. simple as that like just don't like it <laughs> a lot of people do that like I, I think wasn't there a report how much do people actually work in a day and it was like ridiculously low once they studied it it was crazy low It's like three to four hours yeah it's something really low of actual productivity that gets done in a day really low it all comes down to whether you enjoy what you do uh studies show that people can only work uh, during an eight hour day people roughly work somewhere between three to four hours on average which is why they wanted to but this went up when they went back to a four day week i think Hmm. Don't really roll though. If you have responsibilities, finish your projects. Yeah, of course. And it depends on your commitments. It depends on the job. Let's not be clear on this. It depends on the job. If you're doing an underpaid, undervalued job, where, especially if you're doing a job where working hard doesn't actually do anything for you, which is what I was stuck in. That was where I was. Like working my balls off got me no benefit at all. Certainly financially. I got nothing. I got no more than just doing the bare minimum. So, 
why would i i'll focus on the things i enjoy like that's 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 the truth so many jobs is you just don't get any more of working hard compared to just doing like bare minimum or slightly above like pfft. so why would i do that it makes yeah just and, and, and like the office space thing yeah enough to not get fired enough to i'll do enough to not get fired because doing more than that does nothing for me at all uh oh god this article gets really toxic into like how to increase your productivity even <laughs> optimize your meeting times and shit okay <sighs> Literally a joke for us, but it's based on real. I've had days when I've worked six minutes from home and played Dragon Flight Dota 2 all day. Oh, there's whatever lunch break and work like. It depends. Yeah, it really depends. I said to Emma this morning, I'm back into uh, grind mode right now. I'm totally back into grind mode. Like, so I, I like pre-wander. <laughs> it's like we've had our yearly vacation, done that. I'm now back into uh, big grind mode. Just letting you know. Uh... <laughs> oh no blizzard are doing what many other companies have already done how horrible truly they are the big baddie instead we deserve massive raises so we can afford ferraris that's what people are asking for <laughs> complaining about not being able to buy a vehicle laughing my ass off people have always done that in sydney you're too used to throwing away all your money if you moved away, that's your own fault. It was obvious they wouldn't be remote forever. <clears throat> I mean, that's exactly what people are saying. That's, I mean, literally, I was like, where's my Ferrari? <laughs> Where is my Ferrari? <laughs> I can't even get my Ford Focus to work, dude. You know what I mean? Fair. Fair. <sighs> yeah, I can't find anything here about why they're doing it, other than Activision has decided they're doing it. Like, what is the benefit? Because again, based on everything I spoke with them about, the people who were doing this, they, they were absolutely fine with how it gone. 